Good morning, everybody. I'm Pastor John Moore, and this is Our Shepherd Live, and we are so very pleased that you have joined us this morning. Your presence here is an answer to our prayers. Today, we are celebrating and dwelling on the mystery of the, the deity of God being a community of diversity in unity for eternity revealed in love. Nowhere in scripture are you gonna hear or read the word triune or trinity and yet throughout scripture you will see that God has revealed himself as one God but as three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So that's what we're going to unpack today. We're glad that you're joining us for worship. Let's go ahead and make our beginning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and undivided unity. Let us give glory to him because he has shown his mercy to us. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him because he has shown his mercy to us. A reading from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. O Lord, have mercy on us. 
Thanks be to God. Good morning, our shepherds. Our first song this morning is Holy, Holy, Holy. address them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced my flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and re having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he, him, he himself says, 
The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate a mystery. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday. Nowhere in Scripture are we going to read and see the word triune or trinity, but yet throughout the Scriptures, God has revealed Himself not only as one God, Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one, but as three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Today we celebrate the diversity of, of the divinity in unity and community for eternity, revealed in love. So we can say that because God is one being, one God, one essence, that there is no other God but the Father, there's no other God but the Son. There's no other God but the Holy Spirit. And yet, all three remain the one God who has revealed himself as the God of love. Today, John chapter 3, verse 16, pretty much highlights and demonstrates how this community of diversity in unity of the divinity acting in love operates. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now it's no coincidence that just prior to this 16th verse in John chapter 3 that the working of the Holy Spirit has been explained that that no one can see no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born from above born again born by water and the Spirit it's the, the Holy Spirit that's always entwined in the giving of the Son. Always empowering, always bringing about salvation. Love. God loves us. Now, to a great love is revealed to another person by a giving of a, a great gift, a valuable gift. And there's no more valuable gift that can be given than the, the, than the laying down one's life, dying for the sake of another person. A parallel love would be the sacrifice of one's child for the sake of the other. Abraham loved God so much that he was willing to lay down to sacrifice his son of promise, the, the son Isaac that God had promised him 25 years prior to that. And yet God did not want Isaac to die, just like he doesn't want any of us to die. Rather, God in the sacrifice of Isaac was providing a substitute. He stopped Abraham before that sacrifice could take place. He, he showed Abraham the substitute, the ram and the thicket that was sacrificed on that day, but it would be God's own son in the fullness of time that, that would be sacrificed 
out of love for you and me. God so loved the world. Now, that so in, in Greek, it's translated as so in English, does not mean God loves the world so much, even though it is accurate to say that God loved us so much that he gave his only son. Rather, the, ac the more accurate translation of that Greek word is God loved the world in this way. God loved the world in this way that he gave his son to create the world. In Genesis, we, we hear how God created the heavens and the earth and how the Holy Spirit was hovering over the, the, the waters, waiting to breathe life into creation. But it was when God spoke the word, God simply said whatever he said, he called it into being out of nothing that the Son brought creation into being. Now, the Son was involved in forming man. And the Holy Spirit breathed into the, the dust of the earth that had been formed with the nostrils and, and, and mankind became a living being. And, and there was this wonderful intimacy in the garden between mankind and God. Adam and Eve walked and with God and, and they were naked and they felt no shame. And yet, God, yet man lost that intimacy with God, with Jesus in the garden, the pre-incarnate Jesus, the Son in the garden, because they rejected God's creation and, and rejected God being God. And yet, God loved the world in this way, that he gave his son as a promise. He, he told mankind, told Adam and Eve, that e, the seed of Eve would crush Satan's head and, and that this curse of sin would be reversed at that point in time. And, and so the son, the coming of the son, that seed of promise is wove throughout Scripture. And the Holy Spirit continued throughout ancient times to inspire and give vision to the prophets and speak of the one who would come. And so in the fullness of, God, uh, fullness of time, God loved the world in this way that he gave his son to become human flesh, to put on human flesh. The, the Holy Spirit conceived in the hearing of Mary. God, God sent the angel to speak to Mary that she would become the mother of God. And, and in her hearing and believing, Luther says it was in that moment that she conceived. And, and, and the son was became a, a zygote, then an embryo, and an infant, and a child, and an adolescent, and, and a teenager, and, and an adult, all sharing with his human flesh life among us. And God loved the world in this way, that he gave up his son on the cross to save us. God didn't allow haters to keep him from sending his son to that cross. The son was encouraged by the Holy Spirit to look to the Father and obey and to hear the ancient scriptures that spoke about that day and be strengthened. And the Holy Spirit empowered Jesus 
to be nailed to that cross, to stay on that cross and die in our place on that cross so that by dying, he could rise again in victory, ensuring us of everlasting life. God loves the world in this way, that he gives his son that we might be saved by faith. As we look up to the cross, as we see the Jesus who was on that tree, who died for us, and we believe and trust in that promise, we are given everlasting life. The Holy Spirit gives us this promise. And the Holy Spirit empowers us so that that whoever believes, just like Abraham believed the promise and it was counted to him as righteousness, whoever believes in this promise, in this fulfillment, in this life, death, and resurrection of Jesus has everlasting life. God also loved the world in this way, that he gave his son to us in word and sacrament. The Holy Spirit continues to be powerful in the proclamation of the word. The, the Holy Spirit continues to bring about exactly what God promises in the sacrament of holy baptism, in the, in the Lord's Supper, as, as, as God calls us to be his children. In the waters of holy baptism, the Father cleanses us and washes us and, and then makes us his beloved children, gives us faith, unites us with Jesus in his death and in his resurrection. And then in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper to sinners like you and me, Jesus is present. The very body and blood of Jesus that was broken and shed from the cross 2,000 years ago, we get to consume. We take and eat. We take and drink. We, we sense his presence. We, we touch him. We consume him. He gives us his forgiveness for life and for salvation. And finally, God loves us in this way that he will send his son to call us into paradise. God the Father has given judgment over to his son. The God, God in Jesus Christ on the last day will come and he will speak and he will call the dead, lifeless bodies of believers to life again in the Holy Spirit will bring immortality to our mortal bodies. The community of God. That's what we're celebrating today. The, the, the community in diversity of the divinity in unity for eternity, acting in time for our sake out of love, sending the Son to be our Savior empowering us, intertwining with the promise of the Son, the presence of the Son, the activity and the power of the Holy Spirit, bringing us to life now and life eternal. To God alone be the glory now and forever. Amen. We're so very pleased that you were able to join us for worship this day, and this would be the time of our service that we would pass around an offering plate, an opportunity for the people of God to express their worship through a giving of tithe and offering. This is a, a privilege that is given to the faithful, those that have been called by the gospel to follow Jesus. In the Old Testament, 10% of, of one's income was required, but we as New Testament Christians have been given free 
freedom to decide on what we want to give, how we want to give back to the Lord from, from the abundance that He entrusts to our care. But there are some principles that He gives us. First, we are to give joyfully. Second, we are to give proportionally. Third, we're supposed to give regularly. And so, if you would like to participate in this worship in this way, you may do so by sending your offerings to Our Shepherd Lutheran Church at P.O. Box 1509, Huffman, Texas, 77336. Also, I'd love to hear from you. You can contact me at pastor at voicehandsfeetforhim.org. Good morning again, Our Shepherd. Today we'll sing Light the Way. There's a song of resurrection, hope that fills the weary soul. You have made your home inside, I'm not alone. In the shadow of the valley, you were the lamp when I can't see. confess our faith in the reading of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, 
light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> and now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that, that you are God of love. And Lord, we thank and praise you that you have revealed yourself to us as one God, but three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Lord, as we read again and hear again the words of John 3.16, as Jesus said, for God so loved the world, in this way God loved the world that it gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We see that this revelation of Jesus, of as your Son, as the Holy Spirit, always at work in combination with the work of, your, of you giving your Son to us, as, as you desire to redeem and restore us and, and bring us back into an intimate relationship with yourself, Lord. We thank and praise you that, that your love predominates. So Lord, help us to receive this love over and over again. Help us to operate our lives with the knowledge that, that because of Jesus' sacrifice, we are once again made right with you. And we're invited into an intimate relationship with the community of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That, that you bring us into this circle dance of love. Lord, bless every person that, that we have put on our prayer list with all their needs of mind, body, and spirit. Bless the community in, in which we live and, and bless the relationships that that you have brought about. Lord, we know you go before us and you desire that all men would confess Jesus as Lord and, and faith comes by hearing and, and hearing comes through the word of God and, and you've made us your, your witnesses and empowered us by your spirit. So Lord, make us bold. May you go before us so that that the seeds of your gospel are sown and and that the harvest which is plentiful may be brought in lord bless us each one and lord we also thank you for all those that have served this country that have made sacrifices for this country that have given their lives. Jesus, just as Jesus gave his life for the world, there are those that have given their lives for the sake of this country. 
and we thank and praise you for those sacrifices, those very valuable sacrifices. Lord, send us forth by your Spirit, even as we pray together the prayer, I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning again, our shepherd. Our final hymn this morning will be Rock of Ages. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.